there are also a couple of special character classes. There, we are using them so often that uh, they got some special uh, signs or ways to write them. One of them is what we call word characters. So this character class, letters between A and Z, lowercase, uppercase, digits and the underscore, this is used relatively often. So instead of writing all this block all the time, we can use the backslash w. Backslash w means this is a word character, so any of these. Now how can you use this backslash w, you might ask? There are basically two ways to use them. Either you can use them as just a standalone, meaning this is the character class, any of the characters. It, it, it matches exactly one of these characters because it's a character class. And then you can add the quantifier after it. So you can just use it as it is. Or if you would like to create a character class that includes all these and maybe some more, then you can use it as part of a larger character class. So you put it in a square bracket, uh, say backslash w, that's all these characters, and then also there, uh, Diaz and dash. And then you can put a quantifier on it if you want, because now this is a, a character class. So that's how you use these uh, special character classes. Backslash w means word character. Backslash d means digit, between 0 to 9. Backslash s means white space, is one of the five characters. This tab, new line, carriage return, and space, and form field, which is not that much used anymore. And then all the three have their counterparts with the capital letters that just mean the negation of them. So no non-word characters, no digits, and non-space characters. It's just to use, make it easier. Then there are there's the, the POSIX standard. The POSIX standard has dis defined a couple of character classes of its own, and they have names like alpha and alnum and whatever. You have to look it up in the POSIX uh, specification if you really need that. So the case is, the, the, when, when, is when do you use it? If you have some application that needs to work according to the POSIX standard, then you're using probably these uh, character classes. Otherwise, you probably don't care. So that's why I don't go into details, and that's why I'm pointing you to the POSIX POSIX uh, standard in case you you want to use them. The way you do use that is that you put in a square in between square brackets you put a colon then the name of the class and another colon and the closing. So the name would be the the name of the class would be alpha or alnum or, or so you can use them this way as, as you can see it. Okay, either a standalone or inside a, a larger character class. But as I mentioned, it's rarely rarely used. I think. On the other hand, this is a much more often used uh, construct when you're talking about Unicode uh, character classes. So Unicode is this large table with tens of thousands of characters, which are grouped into smaller groups, into character classes, and they have e each have a, a name, like is alpha, or is lower, or is Hebrew, uh, and these character classes, uh, it's, just, it's just a list of characters. And Perl gives you access to these character classes, so you don't have to spell out each list. Uh, the way you do that is to say backslash p, and then in curly braces you say the, the name that Unicode defines. So again, you have to look, up, look it up in the Unicode uh, specification, but you can use that, and this will mean exactly one character of the type that was described here. And capital P would just be the negation of the that character class.